You're not being told the full truth by the same people that didn't tell you the full truth before 9-11. They were nonchalant about the threat of before 9-11, and they're doing it now. The same people are telling you now that the Muslim Brotherhood and the fall of Egypt is all about freedom. It is not. It is not about freedom. It is not about democracy. It is about an Islamic state. Well, that was Glenn Beck back in 2011, warming that Islamic extremists in the Middle East wanted to build an Islamic state ruled by strict Sharia law. There he was talking about Egypt, but in general he talked about the Middle East. Today we're watching that prediction come true as an Al-Qaeda offshoot consolidates its gains over a huge section of Iraq and Syria. And while it seems Glenn Beck's prediction has been proven correct today, here was some of the reaction at the time. That was Glenn Beck last night on his program warning his audience about an Islamic State takeover. This is, all, I do not use the term lightly, Looney Tunes. This is the kind of stuff normally you would prescribe medication. <laughs> he, he, no, I'm serious. And, 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 and normally, it, 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 it does nobody any good. This is from a rival news network. It is something that I would describe, this is my opinion, as out there a little bit. There was an interesting split among the Glenn Beck types, really with delusional ravings about the caliphate coming back. Earlier, I had a chance to ask Glenn how it feels today, knowing that he and this T-shirt, which was released right around that time, may have been prophetic. Glenn, knowing you, uh, I'm assuming you're not really taking a victory lap or spiking the ball in the end zone over being right on this one. No, I'm actually really bummed that I'm right, um, because that prediction came with much more than just a caliphate. Um, and I, I see all of that stuff, um, at least the seeds of it being planted right now. And I don't see anybody um, in Washington at all that will play a longer game. Everybody's playing the reactionary game. The time to react to this um, is over. The time to now look over the horizon and see what's coming from here is right now. And if we don't take some steps right now, um, I, I, you know, I, I see much worse than a caliphate coming our way, unfortunately. Why, why, was, why were so many people so anxious and quick to dismiss your warnings of this exact thing? I, I think because, um, you know, um, nobody really wants to see over the horizon, especially something that's dark. But the only way that you're going to be able to um, uh, survive things is if you look at the possibilities and probabilities. And more importantly, no one's willing to take the people in the Middle East at their word. I don't know why. Is there a political correctness thing going on? Um, yeah, I think there's actually a bias towards the Muslim Brotherhood. They, they just look at the Middle East and the Muslim Brotherhood as friends and, and look at them totally differently. And I think we'll see if, God forbid, uh, Iraq is lost and Iran is brought into this and it is a caliphate, it, you're going to see a civil war in the Middle East. And that is going to be bloodshed like you, you can't even imagine. And, and we should be nowhere near it, unfortunately what's going to drag us in is oil because we're not we're right now the president should be saying we need to have as much oil reserves as we possibly can open everything up open the valves get the gas going forget about this epa thing with the coal let's make sure that we are energy independent soon what do you think because at the time that you were mocked uh, you, you made a couple of predictions. One was that a caliphate was coming and that the goal would be to establish a Sharia state in the Middle East. And that was mocked. That's what's happening. OK, the New York Times has a headline saying that's what's happening. The New York Times now agrees with Glenn Beck. The world has gone. Dead. OK, so that's happening. But you also suggested that you believed it would come to the United States. And then you got mocked for that as well. When I hear you now saying no more. I don't want to go back to Iraq. Not a single more life, not a single more injury. No more. I think about that second part of your prediction and and ask how how that can be consistent. If you if you still believe the caliphate wants to come to the United States, how can you not want to go back there and fight it? Easy. Um, we're not this. I mean, I hate to say these things and it and it um, um, pains me to say these. First of all, the we should start with this progressives liberals um, whoever on the other side i will admit i was wrong about the war in iraq i really thought we could bring peace and justice and freedom and all of that stuff you didn't you were right people have to want it and they have to earn it themselves now because of that 
I'm not willing to spend any more treasure. We've spent two trillion dollars. How many lives have been lost? You are never going to bring freedom there. You're never going to do it. They have to want it themselves. When the Iraqis are just walking away, when the commanders are walking away from the fight, you can't fight for them, and I don't want to fight for them. But you know the mentality is that not that, they, that you know, those who back us going back into Iraq and wanted us to go there in the first place, it's not just let's, let's meddle, well, some of them, um, yeah. it's let's protect ourselves, because if we don't defeat that. this ISIS now in Iraq, they're coming uh, this way, that's no, no. the belief. And Megan, I understand that, but we're not the country we were five, ten years ago. We are depleted, we're war weary, it's not going to happen. We need to pull back, get back into our own country and strengthen ourselves. Look what's happening internally. Look what's happening to us. First of all, a very scary set of um, uh, uh, data points are coming in, and that is the American people, left, right, center, doesn't matter. Forget about politics. They don't feel like anybody's listening to them anymore. They're working harder and bringing home less. The, um, the price of meat is going through the roof. Gee, that was another one that was mocked. Meat, milk, cheese, all of that stuff, higher than ever before. Gas prices, higher than ever before. Just add another dollar to everybody gas price. Add just a little bit more inflation mm -hmm. to the food. You're at a breaking point. Meanwhile, what everybody missed on what happened with Cantor, Cant Cantor, it wasn't about the border. It was about nobody's listening to me anymore. I, I don't want people coming across our border. I, I, I want you guys to hold people responsible in Washington, D.C. The dog ate my homework? That's your excuse to the Congress on, from the IRS? The dog your homework that didn't work in the third grade. So what's happening is people are seeing I'm working hard. I'm playing by the rules. Nobody's listening to me. I'm invisible. These guys are getting away with murder. Well, why am I playing yeah. by the rules if they don't play by the rules? And then if a crisis hits, we tear each other apart. We've got to return home, find our way back to each other. We are a house divided against itself. We've got to come together.